Hi, I'm Vincenzo Coya. Welcome to STAT 545, the video series designed to help you write a clean and modern data analysis. So by now you might be wondering, is STAT 545 only about using clean and tidy and neat little data sets? My data set is crazy and full of columns and just a huge mess. Well, that's what today's topic is about. Quite often you can turn that data set into something that is actually quite nice and tidy. So to make your data tidy, we'll be looking into the tidy R package from the tidyverse. And maybe now you're thinking, gee, this is another R package. Why are we learning about all these R packages and not data analysis? Well, while it's true that we are learning about these R packages, these R packages are based on some sound theory for doing data analysis. ggplot2, for example, is based on the grammar of graphics. dplyr is based on a grammar for data manipulation. And now tidy R is based on a theory of tidy data. The first task is to match your question to a tidy data format. Now, a couple weeks ago, I'd mentioned that when we work with tibbles, each row corresponds to an observational unit or an individual. And then the columns are records on that individual, which we call variables. This is actually the definition of tidy data. And data that's not in tidy format is usually harder to work with. For example, here's a table of the number of penguins surveyed for each species on each island and each year. What if you wanted to find the total number of a daily penguins sampled in 2009? In that case, you'd have to add up all three values across all three islands. Because our observations are spread out across columns, our data is not in tidy format. And so calculations would be messy and wouldn't scale in case you ended up adding more islands to your data set. Here's that same data set in tidy format. Each count entry appears as its own column and the island and year variables that were previously stored as column names each have their own column in the new tibble. Now we can easily calculate the total number of each species counted for each year using dplyr's group by and summarize functions. Tidying that data set involved converting the data from a wide format to a long format by reducing the number of columns and increasing the number of rows. But just because data is in long format doesn't mean that it's necessarily tidy. Sometimes we have to widen data before it becomes tidy. Here's the long format of the data again. But what if you wanted to investigate the relationship between the number of a daily penguin surveyed and the number of Gentoo penguins surveyed? In that case, this data set is too long because Gentoo counts and a daily counts should be separate variables. Spreading the species across different columns put the data in tidy format. Now I can make a scatter plot of the Gentoo versus a daily counts because Gentoo and a daily are their own columns. The second task we'll look at is pivoting your tibble when you have one variable across multiple columns. So to make your data wider or longer to make it in tidy format, we use the functions pivot underscore wider and pivot underscore longer. Let's start with a simple example where species is spread out across different columns, as in the tibble on the right. And then let's make this tibble longer to get the tibble on the left. To use pivot longer, first pipe in your tibble and then identify which columns contain the variable. In this case, all columns except island and year. Notice that the names we specified have been put in a single new column. And the values underneath those names have also been put into a new column. To make this a little nicer, let's indicate the names of the two columns and remove the year prefix from the year variable. Now, how can we widen this long data so that each penguin has its own column? That's where the pivot underscore wider function comes in handy. To use pivot wider, just specify which column you want to spread across as new columns, and which column will contain the values to put under the new columns. The third task we'll look at is pivoting when you have many variables across many columns. So it's not unusual for you to have groups of columns repeated across different variables. And this is really where the pivot functions shine. To warm up to the idea, let's lengthen this original tibble that we saw at the beginning. Here, there are two variables stored in the column names, the island and the year, 
separated by an underscore. Like before, we need to indicate which columns are storing the values. In this case, everything except the species column. Next, we need to tell tidyr that we want the names to go into two columns, not one. But that's not enough, because tidyr doesn't know how to split the names into two parts. So we just indicate what pattern is separating the two parts, in this case, an underscore. That's great, except we've only ever seen one record spread across multiple columns. In this case, a count variable spread across multiple columns. What if we have more than one? Here's an example of a made-up tibble from the pivot vignette, showing the date of birth and the gender assigned at birth for the first two kids of five different families. Here, each child has two recordings, but these recordings are spread out across multiple columns. To lengthen this tibble, like before, we first indicate the columns that store the records. In this case, all columns containing the word child. But this time, the left side of the names date of birth and gender, should stay as column names, and the right side of the names, child1 and child2, should go into their own new column. As before, we can achieve this by indicating where the names go to. Since the left part of the column names should remain as columns, indicate this using dot value, a special code that tidyr understands to mean leave this as its own column. And as before, we need to tell tidyr what pattern separates the left and right-hand sides of the original column names. Fourth is to use tidyr convenience functions. So besides the pivot functions, tidyr comes with a bunch of other smaller functions that can help us make tidy data. Here are a few of them. If we use the original penguins tibble to count the number of penguins of a particular species found on each island, you'll notice that some combinations are missing. These are called implicit missing values. Just use the complete function to make these missing values explicit. If you want to make a tibble consisting of all combinations of values, just use the crossing function. Use the unite function to combine two columns, or separate to do the opposite. So I hope you now feel ready to turn your data into a tidy format. And keep in mind that this isn't something that you just do once throughout your analysis, because your analysis probably has many questions that you want to answer. And for each question, you might have to turn your data into a different tidy format. To do so, keep these four tasks in mind. First of all, match your question to a tidy data format. Second of all, pivot when you have one variable across many columns, or third, Pivot when you have many variables across many columns. And four, use the tidyr convenience functions. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, tune in next class where we discuss the model fitting paradigm in R. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can stay up to date with more data analysis goodies.